The following program has been rated GE by the Kenya Film Classification Board. It is therefore suitable for general family viewing. Thank you so much for tuning in to GBS TV station. This is Chungu Chajami, and I'm your host, Ruth Moniu. We want to talk about steps to life. What exactly steps are we supposed to take so that we can reach where we are supposed to be? Our today's guests have taken the right steps since she is operating a rehab center and she has been nurturing father, mother, and children. Let us listen from her and see how we can make those steps into our lives. Also, we have our counselor, our pastor, who is going to guide us through the word of God and see what steps are we supposed to take in our lives so that we can inherit that eternal life. Pastor, say hi to our viewers. Okay, I'm very happy to greet you all of you viewers, first of all, and also uh, to welcome you to this uh, show. Uh, life is very important and God wants us to live it abundantly and uh, not only in this world but also after we die we can live together with him eternally and uh, his life actually is eternal life and I hope you know all of you are together with us this morning could obtain that eternal life. Thank you so much. Uh, our guest is going to say hi to us and also tell us what she does for a living. Karibunansi. Okay. Uh, thank you so much to all our viewers. Uh, my name is Nancy Wamboy Wanjira. I'm the CEO of Steps to Life Treatment Center. And it's after going through the menace of addiction in my family that I, st I, I decided to start, this, to, to start this vision of Steps to Life. And uh, why I named it Steps to Life is because the program that actually led to healing is a spiritual program and we use the 12 steps of recovery that were discovered in the AA movement. Thank you so much. Yeah. Our SMS line is 21144. Talk to us. Could you be having somebody whom you know who needs help in, her, in his or her life? Could he be addicted by either alcohol, drugs? This forum is for you and you can be assisted. Uh, Nancy, yeah. you started these uh, steps to life with a vision. Mm -hmm. What triggered you to start the rehab center? Okay, the, the subject of addiction is a wide, uh, is a wide concept, mm -hmm. but I want to give it the approach of my own experience. Okay. Uh, I was married to a very handsome guy, and we were in the same college, Mm -hmm. and he used to just go out with friends and drink. And uh, that was a normal thing in college. Mm -hmm. Then he would come back, he would go to, for, to, to classes, and uh, it didn't affect his life at that stage. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as we completed university, we were at Maseno. So when we completed Maseno, we just mm -hmm. got in and got married. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our life together for about six years. Uh, I got my first born, my second born, mm -hmm. but when I got my second born, life had started changing because he would actually drink and it was, you, know, you know, he moved from social drinking to problem drinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are the faces. Mm -hmm. And now when he got into the problem drinking, when my son was young, I really went through hell. It was really not a good experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was still wrestling it with it like a wife, mm -hmm. defending this guy. He refuses to go to work. I'm the first person to call the employer. You know, he has a stomachache. Mm -hmm. uh, now he can't come to work. Mm -hmm. But basically, at the, at the back of my mind, I know very well, he has been drinking overnight, and he came very, uh, home very late, around 5 or 4, mm -hmm. and he can't even make it to work. But I have to defend him, just like a good wife. So and you stood by his side. Yeah, I, I, I stood by his side. Mm -hmm. And that is very common with every woman when they are going through this. Mm -hmm. You want to actually defend your family, you want to defend your husband, you want to take care, good care of him. But uh, hardly did I know that I was actually fighting with a monster. This was not just a simple thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it progressed now from problem drinking to an illness. And mm -hmm. he, he sank 
in 2002, December, around 2003, he sank into total alcoholism, whereby now he would even get lost from getting home. He goes out from work, goes to a bar, drinks, and he does not even know where to, how to get home. So I would spend so many nights waiting for him. And of course, there are all these fears around the, the marriage that uh, the, the relatives would actually coerce me. They would say, before you, this guy married you, he wasn't this way. Mm -hmm. After he married you, now see what has happened to our son. Mm -hmm. And all these were rotating around me. But uh, I'm a mover, and I have the energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm a go-getter. <laughs> I was so determined that my family would not sing mm -hmm. because of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, regardless of whatever they said, I would still hold on and say, this is my husband, mm -hmm. and my children have got a father, and we are going to make it, and he's going to get well. Mm -hmm. So to me now, it started occurring now, this is an illness. But uh, I didn't know what type of an illness it was. Because mm -hmm. back in 2003, People don't even never used to talk about uh, alcoholism as a, as a disease. Mm -hmm. It's a case whereby people look at the man and tell him, can you drink decently? Why are you doing this? Can't you drink like other men? You they know, they condemn, make all, they judge. Yeah, they, they judge, yeah. they condemn, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. Then they also think that I'm the problem. You know, you are working, you have a good job, bet a better job than him, mm -hmm. and maybe you're earning more, and they feel maybe you are the one who is causing this problem. So I was now bugged with all that burden. I'm coping with the physicians, I'm coping with his own character, and I'm coping with children who are not even now understanding their father. How about him personally? Did he accuse you of anything? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He kept accusing me. That of course, at the late stages of alcoholism, mm -hmm. he's even not performing in bed. Now he thinks that you're going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so when he comes and starts fighting you, he's calling you a prostitute. So. And you, you try to be as faithful as possible, be home very early, be there with him even over the weekend to make sure that he, he understands you're not he a prostitute. Suspect, he doesn't suspect you. Suspect you. Yeah. But that, that does not move out of his head. Mm -hmm. So there, there were all those battles that I had to fight. He even went physical. He started fighting me physically. And he would fight me. We would run away with children. He would kick me out of the house. I had a car. So I had made sure in my car there was a blanket at the, in the boat. <laughs> so if he kicks me out, I'll sleep in the car. In the and car. Yeah, and in the morning, of course, he's now sober. He'll open for me. Mm -hmm. But the embarrassment is there because now people are hearing me in the morning, mm -hmm. knocking the door very hard, open for me, I need to go to work. And I struggled with all that. But in 2003, that's now when we, he, he had a blackout. He first went, three days prior to the blackout, mm -hmm. he went out, he, he, we were living in Thika, there is a backward gateway that was just direct to our home. Mm -hmm. But he drank, then lost his way, and he went all the way by foot overnight to Castle. You know where the Castle yeah. factory is? Mm -hmm. He went over the bridge and went to Etavia. And uh, he slept, he, now that's when he realized he's lost and he saw a donkey somewhere. He decided that's a story. Is overnight? Yeah, overnight. And he told me that he slept somewhere near a donkey and said, so in the morning when he of course by then he had lost his clothes wherever he lost the clothes even up to today he doesn't tell us so he, he was naked yeah he was naked when he came home so in the morning when somebody came to open the to to to, to untie the donkey he he told he he, to, he he called him and the man was running away and he said don't run away. I was hijacked and thrown in the forest. You know, you had to cheat. Mm -hmm. I, I was hijacked and thrown in the, fo in, in, in the bushes. And now I'm here. Tell me where I am. And the man came back now to listen and guided him to the, to, to the matatu. And he came. But on the way, they found a, cho a, a chokura, a street boy, who removed his jacket and tied him around his loins. And he got into the matatu now. And of course, he could not sit next to anybody. This time, there were those matatus that had a kambao here behind the, the, the driver. Mm -hmm. That's where he sat. And he, with his embarrassment, it was very early in the morning at around 5, he was at the gate. Now the problem was knocking because he didn't know who will open the, the gate. And he decided now he'll stay there until the first person opens the gate and he sneaks in. He knock. Yeah, so somebody was going out very early, opened the gate, and he came in. So, of course, I had not slept the whole night. So uh, the slightest knock at my door. I just opened and he got in. When he came in, 
he just told me I want to sleep. We were hijacked. You know, he gave me a very sweet, you know, of course, they have very sweet stories. I know, the drunkards, I know yeah. them. I was one of them. <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> he told me we were with that. You mentioned a few friends. And he said we were drinking together. Then as we drove home, we were hijacked and thrown in the bushes. That's why I've come this way. Even my clothes, I don't know where they are. And he just wanted to sleep. But I told him, Daddy, can you go to the bathroom and take a shower? Because you are so dirty. And he said, no, let me first sleep. He just got into the bed. Of course, the embarrassment was, I could see the embarrassment. And this time, it was different. Because now he was naked, I could not suspect he had slept out with anybody. Because now, mm -hmm. So I said, let me be so, a bit sober. Mm -hmm. And when he slept, I said now, because the whole day he'll be in bed, it used to happen that when he comes very late, he'll be in bed. Let me go and see the friends who were hijacked with him. And because some of them were even my... My, my maids and uh, my you knew them in, and yeah, in, yeah. In, uh, during my, our wedding mm. so I wanted to actually follow up on the family mm -hmm. and I land in the house and I'm giving people apologies and I'm sorry for what happened and they're like what? what? Mm. I was told you were hijacked by who? and their car was there outside so and uh, they, they told me what are you talking about? I told them how my husband had narrated a story of how they were hijacked last night mm -hmm. and told me we met with your husband casually near a pub and then we parted mm -hmm. and we never drank with him tell us more of what is happening because now this seems to be a bit serious mm -hmm. so i gave them the story and they told me now we had our own brother who had such a problem mm -hmm. now i started now thinking mm -hmm. what which problem uh, he was in an addict and we were assisted by a certain doctor I'm going to send you to a certain doctor, narrate the whole story, and they are going to guide you on what to do. Mm -hmm. So they referred me to the district psychiatrist in Bika. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, the district psychiatrist, okay, then I, it was in the afternoon, that's when I got the appointment. I sat down with her, and she, I told her, and then she told me, do you know what will happen next? Mm -hmm. Try as much as possible. Avoid your husband taking any more alcohol, because the next thing we are going to do, we'll meet at the hospital. So they told me, he, she told me, now that this stage is where he is. It's a very fatal stage of alcoholism. And uh, at this stage, they get lost. They can be knocked down by vehicle. Or he can even now drink and converse. Or to a total blackout. Now, you make sure you guide, you take care of him so that he doesn't drink. How can you do that? <laughs> now, of course, I ha it was my assignment. Because now everybody was afraid. But she told me, I can't call him because how do you get him out of the house right now to tell him you're taking him to, to, to a doctor? Mm -hmm. He's sober. So next time he chews a blackout, let's meet at Vika nursing home. Don't take him elsewhere because there there's a bit of protection and he can be kept mm -hmm. indoor. Mm -hmm. So I went home now and he, of course he, he explained to me the cycle. And she told me now you have to be a bit careful. So I went to my rural home where my, my mother-in-law was because they used to drink with even my mother-in-law. And uh, I told her, please, if my it's husband, a family issue. yeah, it's a family issue. Yeah. I told him, her, them, next time he comes here, don't give him alcohol. Because mm -hmm. now they were even at the stage of changa, mm -hmm. and how he got lost overnight. And the, to them, it was, you know, what are you telling it us? It was fun. You know, uh, where you know, mm -hmm. Now it started suspicion again. Where kilo me fanya mtoto wetu hadi anze kupotea, you know. You know. So I left and went back to my house. So when I went back home, I stayed. But after three days, he stayed in the house three days. Of course, he was so embarrassed. He didn't know who had seen him naked mm -hmm. the whole night. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how he got home and all that. Now, so was he, he not working? Of course, he was, he's, he, it was over a holiday. Oh, okay. And he, 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 he's a high school teacher even today. Mm -hmm. So when, he go, he, when we got out the, that day, it's because the salary had come. And so he was coming to the, going to the bank. So he went to the bank, got the money, and came back home. Then he told me, you know, I got lost the other day. Take this money and keep, but I'll carry this amount. And once you keep this so that after the end of the nobody is going to take my money. Mm -hmm. So I took the money and kept. Then he took his potion and left. Then he went to the rural home. And they drank. Drank. Mm -hmm. The sister came and even bought him more. As they escorted him, they passed through a pub. He had taken Changa, he took uh, the brown bottles, then he carried sachets. 
that time there were these small circuits that were called Kagunia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he carried with himself. You came to know the names too. Yeah, I know all of them. <laughs> he came back home. And when they just got to the door, he dropped down. The sister was on the other side of, the, of him and I was inside. I asked him, I asked her, Susan, why did you give him alcohol? And she was like, I didn't know. Mm. You know, I, I, I stepped, I, I jumped over him and left the house. And I left the sister now dragging him into the house. I went to the best man who was our best man during our wedding. Mm -hmm. And I told him, come and now see what has happened. And he came back, we came back after some time. Of course, they had to first sit down with me and calm me. And then we came home. Then he told me, because he's drunk, let's just take him to bed. And when he's sober, I can come and cancel the two of you, or talk, or talk to the two of you. When we got to the, w w after he left, uh, about 30 minutes after, I had somebody choking in the bedroom and he was actually vomiting. And when I went there, he was, he was warming, white warm. And I said, what is this? This is now not the normal vomiting. Mm -hmm. So I went and called, I had a vehicle, but I was so shook, shaken, I could not drive. So I called one, of, there was a police officer in our plot who was living there. He knew how to drive. I told him, can you help me take this guy to the hospital? He told me, now in this case, you have to take him to the hospital because if he dies in the house, you have to explain what really yeah. happened. So we picked him, put him in the vehicle, and we drove him to the canassing. Just like the doctor had said, <laughs> we are meeting at Vika Nursing. Mm -hmm. So I called the, na the doctor, the district psychiatrist, and I told her, come, he's now at the hospital. Of course, he, went, he chewed a blackout for 48 hours. He didn't know where he was. I went, to, I changed him. I, 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 of course, he had urinated on himself. Mm -hmm. I changed him, ca carried the clothes, and he stayed there. 48 hours, when he woke up, he started calling Nancy, Nancy in the ward. He didn't know where he was. And he started telling people, "Who you Nancy? Nimbaya sana. Mimi ni mchafu sana haja di badlisha hata nguo tangu ni 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 kujenga nyumbani. You know, to him, he you was know, at home. Well, yeah, at he was home. at home, and he knew it was my responsibility to undress him when he is he has urinated on himself mm -hmm. and to change his clothes. So this time I have not I have failed. And uh, 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 the next patient told him, you know, unajua you could hospital, and he was like, what? You know, he looked around. Then the doctor came and started working on him. They started the detox process, and he was done the detox. detox. And um, after about, he was supposed to be in the hospital for 14 days. Mm -hmm. But uh, the parents, the parent came and said, we uku hospital in the wende umalaya. So it was now a tag. They want him out. And the doctor is insisting 14 days in. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the district psychiatrist had now understood the, the, the case. Told me, st stand there. When mama unasema nini, I want my son out. Now, if you want your son discharged against the medical terms, conditions, just sign here and make sure every day, see your mki atamuleta, Nancy will not deal with this anymore. You will pick your son, bring them to my clinic, and I'll continue with the detox. Because mm -hmm. now, even... Nancy forcing this guy to come to the hospital, it will cause a lot of turmoil. So that's basically what was done. Now came the, 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 the discharge. Where is the money to pay? I gave them, it, the bill was 48000 I gave my mother-in-law, take this money, go and pay, and clear the bill. And he said, all this, it can't cost this. I told her, you go and ask the accountant. Went at the cashier's place. And they counted, and they, even there was a, a, mis a mistake. It was 49. So she had to come back to me for 1,000 one more <laughs> to, to go and clear. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, it is 49, not 48. Yani hii yote tunalipa kwa sababi ya ile changa tulikujwa ya shilingitano. And I told her, yes, you have to pay and feel the pain that I am feeling and what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And if I came home and told you that's the money I've paid, you would not understand. So now we are doing it practically with you. So she took the money, went and paid, and cleared the bill, and the, the guy was discharged. So every morning, my mother-in-law would leave her rural home, pick the guy, take him to the district psychiatrist to continue the, the detox. Then after the detox was done, for a whole one month, he was a bit sober and monitored by the, the district psychiatrist, but they recommended a rehab, to, that he goes to rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was the turning point. He was taken in at Red Hill Place, and when I got there, you know, the whole perspective of what alcoholism changed. 
I just thought it was just drinking. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just something simple. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, the counselors and the people who handled us made us now realize what alcoholism is. Mm -hmm. He was given the counselor, the, the addiction counselor. I was given the family counselor, and she worked on me. Then what also surprised me is that I realized that it's not the addict himself who is also sick. The whole family is sick. Mm -hmm. I was very sick. I had ulcers. But you see, the focus was not on me. Mm -hmm. I was focusing on my guy. Mm -hmm. I was focusing on the father of the children. And I even forgot my children were also absorbing the whole mess. Mm -hmm. And they had their own part to do. Mm -hmm. So we got into the program of the 12 steps. And he did his 12 steps as an inpatient. I did the 12 steps as an, okay, he's an alcoholic. I became an, an Aladon. From then I would call myself an Aladon. Mm -hmm. And I worked my programs, the 12 steps as an Aladon. And my children worked the 12 steps as Alatin. Mm -hmm. So the program of the 12 steps program really mended our loopholes. It mended, it, it turned our life around. Mm -hmm. And it's basically around God. It's all about God. Mm -hmm. That's when you realize that the first three steps in, 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 in the program are for you to surrender to God. First of all, you, you are defeated by this alcoholism. Mm -hmm. That's why you've handed over the person mm -hmm. to the, to the counselors or the, to the treatment center. Myself, I've been defeated. That's why I cannot handle it again. Mm -hmm. And we turn our will and our lives over to the care of God through the first steps. The other seven steps are action steps, mm -hmm. whereby now you have to work on yourself. Look at your morals. See where you failed in the whole setup. Mm -hmm. And mend your ways. So that by the time you come together again, he's impatient. You are out. Mm -hmm. By the time you come together again, each one of you has worked through the program and you know your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know how to handle the case. Now, are you still together? Uh, yes. And you what have, uh, he has come out no, of No, what alcohol. happened is that uh, after 2003, that was, uh, he came out of the rehab in August mm -hmm. and uh, we had already drawn a boundary and we had decided the next time you fight me and the next time you drink, I'll be out. I can't swallow any more violence. Of course, he had hurt me so much. And I had decided that was the, what he agreed. Mm -hmm. So when he came around December, he drank again. And he became, he relapsed. That's called a relapse. And he became very violent and fought me. And I told him, did we agree that I have to move out? Because now this time, I'm also defending the children. Because you know, when you go through the counseling, you realize, you think your children don't know what is happening to the family. Mm -hmm. They absorb so much they get sick mm -hmm. now you have also to defend them and uh, some of the things that came out during the session they were really bad I, in fact the whole marriage would have ended in the rehab mm -hmm. but at the end of it all i carried it to home i didn't want to desert him in the rehab and i gave him another chance to continue being with me but when he drank and fought me i told him give me one week i pack and leave the boundaries are clear I have to be on the other side, mm -hmm. and you have to bring up the, we have to bring up the children. So we had a separation, and we even went to court and got separated. And uh, we, we stayed for several years, not together. Then he stopped drinking. Of course, now he knew things were very serious. I want you to stop there a bit, yeah. and then we'll continue. Uh, we are going to take a short break and continue after. Stay tuned. Welcome back as we continue with Steps to Life. Our SMS line is 21144. Could you be a victim or could you be on your way to be a victim? We've been listening f to, uh, from our guest, Nancy, how the family has helped the husband and the children were suffering out of alcoholism. The side effect of this, and still she has not finished, but first, let us listen from our pastor the exactly word of God, the steps we are supposed to take to that eternal life. Okay, fine. We, uh, we are now in front of a situation whereby man has to realize himself yes. who he is. Yes. Actually, uh, uh, I was a drunkard, but uh, I think by the grace of God I came to discover God and the love of God before it was, I was too much involved in that, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Because I would drink, I would come back home three in the morning, two in the morning. I would drink and even sleep outside. Uh, but uh, thank God, I didn't lose my senses. I came back to my senses. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, many people then think I'm doing wrong things because I want to do wrong things, right? But actually, as you know, no one wants to destroy his family. No mm. one wants to harm his wife, his children. Sure. All of them, they are dragged by either, you know, sin. And of course, when you talk about sin, it's connected with all those other things, whether mm. it's alcohol, whether it's prostitution, whether it's whatsoever it is, you know. Mm. Sin has got actually produces so many of those bad and uh, evil fruits in our lives. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, the Apostle Paul uh, knew how to phrase it even better. Because many people think I'm the one who's committing sin, I'm the one who's evil, I'm the one who's doing this and that. But the Bible doesn't say anything similar to that. Mm -hmm. So, the, here in the Romans chapter 7, Verse 15, this is what the Apostle Paul says, For that which I do, I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, that, but sin that dwells in me. And verse 18 he says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing, for it is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not here. Uh, something that uh, the Apostle Paul came to discover is that, you know, he's been always, had been trying always to, to do something good, but it didn't happen according to mm -hmm. what he wanted. I mean, he's anticipating good, but then he doesn't do the good thing he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, you know, he says, now, he says, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that was in me, right? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? When you are able to distinguish, this is me and this is sin, sin yes. right? It's very important. Mm. Now, the man came back home, right? Mm -hmm. He messed up himself. I'm very sure when they got married and when they were in the campus, you know, this man is handsome, he's uh, very clean, you know, uh, he puts on properly, right? He does not even have any single idea that he can urinate on himself, you know. Mm -hmm. He was like such a person. Mm -hmm. I'm very sure had she find a man who urinates on himself, who, you know, was messing up himself, <laughs> beating him up, you know, mm -hmm. she would have said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hell with you. I mean, I don't want anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. That would have been that case. But then, when the alcohol comes into the body, right, just like sin, mm -hmm. it has the power to control you to do the things you never <coughs> want to do. That's why, actually, sometimes when I hear drunkards, I don't really... Uh, you know, seek to blame them. I'm a counselor. I've met many of them. Mm -hmm. I don't blame anybody. I know he comes to a position whereby he's powerless and mm -hmm. alcohol is more powerful than powerful. he is, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I have this idea, okay, I'll drink, but I will never show that I'm a drunkard man. In fact, uh, when I was drinking, you know, I would say I would drink, but I will never let anybody know that I'm drunk. Mm -hmm. That idea was there in me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but did you make it? Ah, it's impossible. <laughs> what do you mean, you know? <laughs> the moment I'm drunk, when I'm just trying to talk, mm -hmm. people will discover, who you know, Leo, you know, is drunk. When I try to walk, mm -hmm. again, they will know. When I behave in this and that way, they know, ah, this man is drunk. Why? Because mm -hmm. I'm not myself. I'm under a certain power which is controlling me. So anyway, the Apostle Paul was in that situation till he was able to discover himself. Oh, yes. No longer me. me but sin in me. And then eventually he spoke about you know, the Lord. So that's why he says in verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So there he's able to discover, it's not all about me trying to do this and trying to come out myself. Mm -hmm. But then when the true power that come from God through Jesus came upon him, then he was able to be victorious in everything. So this is something very important. People, you know, they normally tr struggle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then back in the mind, I have this idea. Whenever I want to quit drinking, I will just quit. Mm -hmm. If I want to stop, I will stop. Let me drink, but I will not be able to, you know, uh, I will not spoil my family. Why would I spoil my family? You know, how would, why, why would I spoil my career? Right? Because of drinking. Mm -hmm. Because of drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one time I was dealing with a drunkard man. Mm -hmm. right? He came in my office very late in the night, past 11, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> drunk, uh, you know, the office is smelling all over and, you know, I don't know what to do. But, you know, at that particular time, mm -hmm. my senior pastor passed through the office, you know, I have a senior pastor, right? <laughs> so I really wanted to explain to him, it's so hard for me to deal with this man, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. That time I remembered, you know, we are actually talking about David, you know. David is a man who never wanted to give up even one lamb into the mouth of the lion. Mm -hmm. So he told me, you know, uh, David, even though the animal is, swall is uh, swallowed all together, right, if there's still one leg inside, he wants to remove still this, even the leg, you know, mm -hmm. or the ear, still he wants to remove the ear, you know, when the animal has been swollen and it's only the ear, you know, you may say, ah, this is for what? So, I was telling him, ah, if this brother is the mouth of the lion, the Satan already has swallowed him over, I don't know what to do with him. But he told me, you are the very person who will remove him out of the mouth of the lion. He yeah. said like that. <coughs> Within my heart, I was like saying, what am I supposed to do? But from that time onwards, I was praying and I was fellowship with the word of God with him. Mm. Eventually, when they are able to accept the word of God in their mm. heart, they can change. But then there are many also who despise the word of God. I think, uh, you know, when you despise the, work of the word of God, as you know, God only works through his word, you know, the work of God cannot be accomplished in you. So that's why, uh, if I may put it actually, the hope is the word of God. God. The hope, the power in the word of God is able to heal me from any addiction, from any other power, mm -hmm. from any sickness. But when you despise the word of God, then you don't have anything to do with God. Uh, Nancy, you reach somewhere whereby you are uh, separated. Yes. Can you continue from there, maybe? And since we don't have a lot of time, maybe you can compare. Okay. Now we got separated, mm -hmm. but uh, last then he sank into a, a new addiction. He has stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. He started uh, smoking and chewing mirror. And he did that over a period of um, almost ten years. But uh, in 2015, he was living with my son at, uh, in Nyandarwa, where he was teaching. And my son called me and told me, of course, we were good friends. We, were, we, we related very well. With your husband? Yeah, because during the, the, the rehabilitation period when I did my program, the best skill I was given is to realize, just like Pastor has said, we separate the man from the addiction. Separate the man from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. The alcoholism is the disease but he's a good man. Mm -hmm. So only when this alcoholism is in him that leads him to do all these things. And the minute I understood that, we became good friends. So I'm the best person to understand him mm -hmm. when he makes his messes. Mm -hmm. So my son calls me and tells me, Mami, Daddy ni mugonjwa. Alikuwa hospitali na ametoka. Lakini, bile naona hii ugonjwa, hii, Mami sasa. How old is your son? The son was 14 by then. Mm -hmm. 13. He told me, uh, come and see, help daddy. His legs are not moving. Now I was taken aback. Then I told him, can you first of all call the sister? The sister was called from Mombasa. He came, she came and assessed the situation and called me and told me, eh, Nancy, he loved the Nihasirayako. Sisi atuelewe hii ugonjwa digani. Of course they thought it was a curse or something because he had gone to hospital and nobody was, you know, misdiagnosis. It is pneumonia and all that. And so I told me, Sina, Sina, I have no curse. We are bringing up children together with Gabriel and we are doing so well. No, I have, I have over all this period I've healed all the pain that I had, the grudges and all the, 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 the resentment I, I was holding. Mm -hmm. I've healed, he has healed. So nobody, so I said, bring him from Nyandarwa because now that side we cannot get specialized treatment. Mm -hmm. Come this way to Nairobi and I book a doctor. So I took him to Kikuyu Hospital and they did the bones. Of course, he was, he, they were not, the legs had not uh, changed color, so he, he could walk a few steps, then stop, four steps, then stop. They were very painful. So they did the, 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 the uh, orthopedic center. They did the x-ray, and the bones were okay. But they said he needed an angiogram for the both legs. And this was very expensive, so it was about 40,000, 22, and then the next leg, 22. And uh, they, they didn't have, we didn't have the money. So I told them, can you go home? Then I look for ways of actually solving this. So I remembered we had a, 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 an insurance policy with AA on, mm -hmm. and I revived it, and we, we, we put it online. Him, he had not done all that. He had given, forgotten, he was being deducted that money. Mm -hmm. 
So we got to a doctor and I got him, they told me the partner hospital in Thika was Naidu. And we got to Naidu and he, the angiogram was done and all that. And we realized the, 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 the left leg had to go. So it was amputated. Yeah, it was amputated above me. But the, now that was a dark moment for the children, for me. We had to even, the doctor had first give us counseling because we could not imagine daddy without a leg. You know, nobody really understands what somebody goes through when a, a, a part of the body has to be amputated. Mm -hmm. And the pain was that I would look at it and say, this is because of addiction. Mm -hmm. And people blame the scenario. They blame the wife, they blame the children, they may even blame the, 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 the addict himself. Has he really called for an amputation? Mm -hmm. Yet it is, it is so strong that even when he's still in bed, he still wants to even send somebody a cigarette, a puff kidogo, because of that addiction. And uh, the, the, of course the leg went. Was that all? No. The leg went. Then after two months, of course we, it was rehabilitated and, uh, and everything was fine. After two months, he had gone back to school uh, with my son and the next one got stuck. So my son calls me, I, we organize a, an ambulance from Charity Hospital and he was brought all the way to Dika and when he arrived there, uh, the leg was not, uh, it was bad, they, they took an x-ray and an angiogram and it said it is uh, being amputated but he threw tantrums and said no, of course he could not accept the situation. Now losing one two months ago and the next one has to go, he decided no. So he was discharged, we went home. And uh, he decided now to stay for a whole month, you know, crawling with the pain and doing everything possible that it will be saved mm -hmm. and convincing himself that things are not that bad. And of course, even us now, we are giving him hope that God will heal this. And we prayed and did everything possible. But uh, at, uh, the, the, after three weeks, it turned black, the whole leg again. Now that's when you see the, fo the, 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 the picture. And I told, uh, now, of course, there were worms at the toes and I told him now you can't wait any longer. I took him back to the hospital and the second leg went. So as we are talking now, he's on a wheelchair. He can't walk. He can't walk. And let me tell you, the pain in the guy is so much that he is now longing for a time when he can walk. He's asking us, why are you giving me a wheelchair? I need to walk again. He's looking, he, we, you know, we had booked a leg before the second leg went. Mm -hmm. We had booked a leg uh, an, 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 uh, an artificial leg at Kijade Mission Hospital, mm -hmm. deposited 120,000, waiting for them to prepare. And that's when now this other one was decided it has to go. So we now cancelled that, because now we could not even afford to pay both legs. So we decided, went for a wheelchair, and we decided now, because the school where he was teaching, they had done a harambe, mm -hmm. and there was enough money, we buy him a motorized wheelchair, mm -hmm. which is now a motor, and it can be charged, mm -hmm. and it can take himself it around. Yeah, it can be mobile. Mm -hmm. and then uh, he was transferred from there. I looked for a transfer from the TSC. Then I got him to Makwa, mm -hmm. which is just a few meters from the home. And the school prepared pads for him to move with comfort and even classroom and even a toilet for himself. Mm -hmm. And he, he has been going to school. But uh, I wanted the viewers to understand that it's not the person's wish. Mm -hmm. The person is in bondage. No, let me ask you, Nancy. Can he dare take a? a no, he doesn't smoke is anymore. Is he drinking? Okay, you know, after now the, the losing the legs, he sank now into a depression, oh. and the only solution was, it was that he who just wants to drink something to to, to be not to be very sober mm -hmm. to to face the reality, and uh, he moved now. He stopped smoking, went back to drinking again, and we've now started counselling him out of that, but he needs a rehabilitation. But uh, it's not as bad as in the initial stages. He can now go to school, but uh, over the weekend, uh, yeah, he goes yeah. to the bar. Yeah. And you not to the bar. In the rural homes, uh, Changai go kwa manyumba. Now he's taking Changa. Yeah, he's taking, he, 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 the brown bottles don't do anything. What you realize with an addict, they develop tolerance of the, of the substance, mm -hmm. such that Alianza the brown bottles, he goes to Changa, you know, he continues now taking the concentrated ones. Mm -hmm. So Wakati Amefika is a concentrated, a brown bottle means nothing to him. Mm -hmm. So he has to be on whiskey or even the jeans or even the, cha the Changa itself. So you don't even have to get it for him because I cannot myself. I'm so uh, grown up in this program mm -hmm. that I will not entertain that. 
but he'll just take the wheelchair, go to the neighbors, wake up Kibuya Lita Tano, then he carries that and he goes and locks himself in the bedroom. So that those are the struggles that we've gone through. And uh, I worked through my program from 2003 mm -hmm. to date. Mm -hmm. And out of all these struggles, after we lost the legs, after we did everything, I told God now it's the highest time I start supporting other women. There are so many people who are going, you know, I know what it entails from the first initial stages to where we are mm -hmm. now. And I decided now, let me see how I can help more. Mm -hmm. uh, I came up with the idea of the rehab mm -hmm. because there's a place I was building and I started building the center and uh, we are now preparing the inpatient. What we've been doing basically right now, we've been going through schools to do, give motivational speaking, mm -hmm. to counsel the students, to prepare, because I knew if my children had been prepared for this, they would not have sunk the path they were. Because mm -hmm. I know the different categories of children who, who grew up in an alcoholic family. Mm -hmm. And I said, before the children get to this, before people are, are addicts, can they be told the repercussions? Mm -hmm. Can they be taught the dangers? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. So we go to schools with my colleague. One is doing it in Gong, the other one I'm doing it in Tika. In schools, we talk to, to students. We talk to the teachers because mm -hmm. it definitely it requires even a teacher to understand mm -hmm. the, 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 the problem. I think you have to talk to the mothers too. <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> Your mother-in-law. Yeah, in the, in the, of course, when we went through the counseling three months, she was part of the counseling. Mm -hmm. So she understands the, mm -hmm. the problem. But it has not ended because even her, she still drinks. She still drinks. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I, w in the reha, I, I, I founded now Steps to Life. Uh, what are we doing in Steps to Life? We have three programs. One is the, for the alcoholic, which will be the inpatient, definitely with the doctors and with them the addiction counselors. Mm -hmm. The other one is Al Anon, which is an outpatient program where now I'll deal with the whites to the alcoholics and the relatives mm -hmm. and help them, give them the skills that I have acquired throughout. Of course, I've done a lot of study in this. I've even written a book, which I've not yet published, mm -hmm. on how addiction affects Christian families. Basically because the Christians, we don't even talk about alcoholism in our families. Fa Pastor, you agree with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to tell people what happens at the back of, inside my house. <laughs> so I, I did a research on that, and I realized <laughs> people have problems. You may be preaching to a congregation that is dying, because as soon as you preach to them, they get to the gate, everything evaporates, because whoever they are fighting is there. Everything has changed upside yeah. down, yeah. See, the setup has already Nancy, changed. I'm forced to cut you short. <laughs> this has to be for another day, because surely our families are dying. One, because of alcohol. Yeah. Two, because of uh, drugs. And the worst is, we don't want to speak it. Denial. Denial. Yeah. yeah. That is where people are dying. Now. Can we invite you another day? Yes. You come and tell us exactly what we are supposed to do. Okay. Just take two seconds and give your parting, parting shot through that camera. Okay. To my viewers, I wish to tell you that the battle of addiction or alcoholism is a battle nobody can work it out alone. You need God, you need the support of others who have gone through the same menace. And I'm sure we will be coming close together. We'll be making contacts so often. And when you come together with others who have gone through the same menace, mm -hmm. you draw strength, hope. Mm -hmm. And the experiences shared give you hope that tomorrow things can change. Mm -hmm. And I'm trusting God that through Steps to Life, a rehabilitation center or counseling center, so many people will get healed emotionally, socially, even physically. And so many alcoholics will change their lives. We are also giving it an approach of even the Christian side of it, so that even the pastors and the community and community leaders can come and have seminars and workshops there, mm -hmm. so that they are able to change, to, to change their attitude and understand the whole concept. Because when they are, the, 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 the addict is out of the rehab, they need to be supported by the same community where they come from. Thank you very much. Pastor, give us your parting shot. Where man can't, God is able to or start from there True. and uh, I'm very hopeful that all those uh, addicted people uh, when they are connected to God yes. definitely their life will never be the, the same, same. and I want to personally um, uh, counseling families but also I want to counsel everybody mm -hmm. who has problems so that they can be connected to God and have a new life all together thank you thank you so much
Nancy, you've been a blessing to our show, and we are looking forward for your coming back and let us know what we can do. How can we help these families who are dying mm -hmm. because of alcohol, alcoholism issue? Yeah. And for sure, you will come back and you will educate us more. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for the good advice. And surely, that which is disturbing us is the reason of being apart from God. We have distanced ourselves with God. If only we can come back to God, each and every problem will not be a problem because God is the one who will protect us from all these problems. Chumucha Jami is aired every day, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. Thank you so much. God bless you and take care till next time.